Okay. We are in the book of Job, chapter 31 today. We have our customary apprentice, our mascot, to make noise for us. And hopefully he'll be a good boy today. But if not, just ignore him. Job 31. I have made a covenant with my eyes. How then could I look at a young woman? For what portion would I have from God above? Or what inheritance from the Almighty on high? Doesn't disaster come to the wicked? And misfortune to evildoers? Does he not see my ways and number all my steps? We live in a fallen world, yes. But the choices you make dictate the joy you have in your heart, right? So you can allow the evil around you to oppress you. Or you can take the heed that the Lord Jesus gave to us to be light in this world, to be salt. Because we're not going to change the world. The world's going to continue to go down the sewer of despair into the epitome of suffrage and the outer darkness, lake of fire, where Satan and his angels will be forevermore. And those that choose to follow their own flesh and not the joy of their creator will join Satan and his angels. So you can make the choice to have joy in your life, realizing sometimes we're not going to have it because hard things have happened and, and they're difficult to deal with. And so you may have the joy in your, the Lord in your heart. You may have contentment, but there's sorrow that bubbles out. And that's okay, because that's real. Jesus cried. He wept. He wept over Jerusalem that they refused to repent. They refused to submit. They, they refused to choose their Messiah. They still haven't chosen their Messiah. Israel is, is godless. You know, you say, well, how can that be? They're very religious, like so many... Uh, Catholic people I know, uh, various uh, false religions they follow to the T. Um, but they have no joy because they have no truth. Because Jesus said, if you abide in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And you'll know the truth. And the truth will, what? Set you free. There's only one truth that will set you free, and that's Jesus Christ. Not religion. Not, not even Protestant religion or Catholic, Catholic religion. There's a lot of idolatry and paganism and Catholicism. We'll talk about that another day. That doesn't, doesn't mean there's not true believers in it. Um, but that's, that's a topic for another day. It's false religions are another matter. Um, you have the whole pseudo-Christian experiences out there, the, the Mormonism, the Jehovah, Jehovah Witness thing, the Armstrong people. I mean, there's reams of false religious false churches out there are there true believers in them probably because new believers we were stupid right i went in the church and i didn't understand nothing and people said well why and i honestly didn't have the answer because i didn't know i just said i don't know but um i'm born again and you know my, my pet answer was, I don't do this, and I don't do this, and I love Jesus, and he loves me. That's the best I could do. I couldn't tell you about, at that point in my walk, you know, at uh, 15 years of age in 1978, I could not tell you about the precepts of the Word of God that God has taught me now, uh, after so many years, since 1978. And I've been down and up and down and up and down and up a lot of times that I can't even count. But by the grace of God, I've made it this far, and I didn't understand everything. So there's a lot of young baby believers that are in these kind of pseudo-church kind of things, and um, and all I do is try to steer them to the truth. And 
to the Word of God and to Jesus Christ, the personage of God, whom they can connect with wholeheartedly, and that's where they're going to find their truth. Um, but we'll talk about that another day. Job has made the choices, right? So you can choose to look at the billboards and the media and the paraphernalia that this world, you know, uh, plethorates to you that you should eat up with your eyes and your ears and, you know, the entertainment, you know, going to sports events and concerts and games and shows and ad nauseum. Once in a while is okay, but ad nauseum, then, you know, then you start to, then you're going to get scattered. But Job, that's, he was a man that was solid in the midst of all this difficulties that he has gone through. He says, I've had a covenant with my eyes. Men, you have to co have a covenant with your eyes. Women, you have to have a covenant with your eyes. All of us have to have a covenant with our eyes. Keep your mind focused on Christ. doesn't matter what, there's things that you're going to see in front of you that, that you wish you wouldn't have seen. You just turn your eyes. You move away, you know. Don't go back and start gazing and letting your mind wander off. You just move on, okay. Um, that's the way it is. That's what Job said. I made a covenant with my eyes. If I hear something, people are talking naughty, then get away. You can't help the fact that you've heard garbage already. You can't help that fact. But what you can help is that you stick around and hear more. So get out of there. You know, get out of the get out of the sewage chamber. Okay, here we go. Um, we're going to pick up in verse 4. Because the bear was chewing the flab, right? Sorry about that. But I can't help myself. We start talking about good things in the Word of God. Uh, I've got to, My pie hole just starts flapping, you know. But we're going to move on. Does he not see my ways and number all my steps? Indeed, the Lord does. If I have walked in falsehood and my foot has rushed to deceit, let God weigh me with an accurate balance and he will recognize my integrity. If my steps, if my step has turned from the way, my heart has followed my eyes or impurity has stained my hands, let someone else eat what I have sown and let my crops be uprooted. If my heart has been seduced by my neighbor's wife or I have lurked at his door, let my own wife grind grain for another man and let other men have her. So he's kind of laying it out on the floor. For that would be a disgrace. It would be a crime deserving punishment. For it is a fire that consumes down to abaddon, down to hell. It would destroy my entire harvest. If you're unfaithful in your in your mouth, in your eyes, in your ears, in your physical activities, in your loves and your passions, then you need to you need to bring that in tight and repent of it and and get your road straight and narrow and true as a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's, it's not a matter of there's so much around you. It's a matter of what's in here. You make the choice. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Worry about right in here, your choice, your your commitment, your abiding, your walking. If I have dismissed the case of my male or female servant, when they have made a complaint against me, what could I do when God stands up to judge how should I answer him when he calls me to account? Did not the one who made me in the womb also make them? Did not the same God form us both in the womb? And indeed he did, right? He formed us. It's, uh, 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 it's like a zauber, the zauber effect in your womb. It's like almost magical what God does in the womb and brings out a human being and it comes out he or she and forevermore they're they're a personage they're a human being that makes choices that says daddy mommy that says i love you jesus um, 
It, it just, it's a miracle. God has done that. If I refuse the wishes of the poor or let the widow's eyes go blind, if I have eaten my few crumbs alone without letting the fatherless eat any of it, for from my youth I raised him as his father, and since the day I was born I guided the widow, if I have seen anyone dying for lack of clothing or a needy person without a cloak, if he did not bless me while warming himself with the fleece from my sheep, if I have ever cast my vote against the fatherless child, when I saw that I had support in the city gate, then let my shoulder blade fall from my back. In other words, let his body crumble into a lot of people. Oh, I got aches and pains. I need a surgery for this and for that. They spend a lot of their life in, in, in partying and overworking their body and not honoring the Sabbath and resting. Their bodies are shot. That's what Job says. He says, if I've been disobedient, let that happen to me. But he, he wasn't disobedient. Job's going through this because he was obedient. And this is a test for all mankind to see. And I've talked about it before. It's, you know, two, three thousand years later, and we're still talking about Job and what he went through and what a good man he was. It was a privilege that Job had. Very few of us are worthy of it. Very few of us are capable of what Job did. Let my shoulder blade fall from my back and my arm be pulled from its socket. For disaster from God terrifies me, and because of his majesty, I could not do these things. As a Christian and a follower of Christ, when you make decisions and you do things, you, you think in the back of your mind, okay, does this, is this what the Lord wishes? Is this, is this in his eyes? Where, where do I stand? Always make that guesstimation. Somebody comes to your mind while you're, you're, you're kind of waking up in your sleep and you just think about it, pray for them. You know, maybe you pray for them that God would judge them so they turn from their sins. Sometimes you pray that God would lift them up. Sometimes you pray that God would just love them. Give them, give them a little love. Give them a big bear hug spiritually from your, from your bed while you're sleeping and you're praying that God would visit them. If I place my confidence in gold or called fine gold, my trust if I have rejoiced because of my wealth, because it is great, or because my own hand has acquired so much, if I have gazed at the sun when it was shining or at the moon moving in splendor, so that my heart was secretly enticed and I threw them a kiss, this would also be a crime deserving punishment, for I would have denied God above. I don't know that we really have people that do that too much in at least in my neck of the woods, um, worshiping the sun, the moon, stars. I know it goes on in various parts of the world. The, what God has created out there in the heavens, the stars, sun, the moon, the planets, beautiful, but not to be worshipped. Have I rejoiced over my enemy's distress or become excited when trouble came his way? I have not allowed my mouth to sin by asking for his life with a curse. Haven't the members of my household said, Who is there who has not had enough to eat at Job's table? Always be there. Don't always be looking for the free handout, free ride. If you have what it, you know, to give, then give. Because it's way more blessed to give than to receive. Always standing in the food line begging. You know, go out, get a job, work. Yeah, so that you could have something to give to somebody else. Always be ready to stretch it out to somebody else that has a need. And if you're in a situation where you need a handout, that's okay too. You know, that if you know the job market is down, you lost your job, you're losing your house, that's okay. It's not a spiritual matter. It just means that's what you're going through in your life, you know, and ride it out. You know, and if people say, you know, you need to be working and there's no jobs out there, just, you know, they mean well, just uh, continue on. Continue doing what you're doing. And when the job comes, give it everything you've got. And right now, the job market's tight for you. 
then then it is. You know, it's not a God's judgment. It just means maybe time you can spend time in prayer, the study of the Word of God, and, and some type of ministry. No stranger had to spend the night on the street, for I opened my door to the traveler. Have I covered my transgressions as others do by hiding my guilt in my heart? Because I greatly feared the crowds and the contempt of the clans. So I grew silent and would not go outside. If only I had someone to hear my case. Here's my signature. Let the Almighty answer me. Let my opponent compose his indictment. I would surely carry it on my shoulder and wear it like a crown. I would give him an account of all my steps. I would approach him like a prince. If my land cries out against me and its furrows join in weeping, if I have consumed its produce without payment or shown contempt for its tenants, then let thorns grow instead of wheat and stinkweed instead of barley. Now the words of Job are concluded. Sometimes people fall into a wrong movement, a wrong lifestyle. And the best thing to do immediately is admit it. So many people get caught up in a rebellion against a, a preacher, against a good man, a godly man, against parents. And after time goes by, they realize they're wrong, but they don't come out as they did publicly against that person and admit their sin publicly. If you've sinned publicly, there needs to be a, a confession of sin publicly. If you've sinned in the privacy of your chamber against you know, your spouse or so forth, then you should confess it to that person privately. But if you've gone public against a uh, politicians, so if you've slandered them, slander is a, is a huge sin, it's a lie. And liars will not be in heaven. So if you're a Christian in a church and you're slandering your preacher up there, then you need to pull it in. If you've publicly slandered to people, then you need to publicly make a confession of repentance and contrition. You know, you need to you know, lay it out there because that's, you have to. That's what Job said. Don't cover your transgressions. Let it out. If you sin, then confess it. Then you let it out. That's how you get free. Confession of sins looses you. When you're always hiding, you always have that, that black monkey on your back that's always nibbling at the back of your spiritual head. Don't let them, don't let them camp out there. That spiritual condition of guilt. Just confess your sin and get yourself free. All right. God bless you from the Bears, Jim. And Knut and I wish you... Godspeed. We'll see you.